Never ever buy a race car without front suspension. said was going to come in five or ten minutes so they've got to react to what the track's going to do now and by the time here's the replay of the ericsson crash yeah oh oh dear martin just as well that car's got a scaffolding pole like front hasn't it My advice, never ever buy a race car without front suspension. So here you can actually see the damage that was done to the tub. The wishbones ripped into it with the pressure of the crash against the wall in Hungary. And here you can actually see after the repair. The repair was up to a standard good enough for the Formula Renault engine. It's straight and true and ready for some new wishbones now with the inside repaired as well. Now we have a starting point. The monocoque straight is repaired well enough to take the Formula Renault engine power. And here are the pickup points from the original CAD. So why not use the original suspension? I didn't have it. It's now June 2015. I own the monocoque, but I don't have the engine cover or the floor. And this is a screen grab from the June auction. And that's where I bought the engine cover and the floor. But by then, there was no suspension left. I looked at having suspension made like for like out of carbon fibre. I had the CAD, however, that equated to around £90,000 per corner. So I stuck with steel. I used the uprights from the Formula Renault donor car, and this is what I ended up with. So if I look at an example of a pull rod suspension, you can see the steering arm on the top left, the steering rod, pull rods for the suspension, upper and lower wishbones. This is actually from a Formula 3 or a W series car that was driven by Bicycle Vissa. You can see them together, it looks complicated. It's not that complicated but they have to be symmetrical. So the damage on the tub had to be repaired accurately before I could drive the car. And the car in question, well, there it is today, and this was it in action. Singapore, slightly better reaction time for Bajka Vissa. That's gonna be the lead if she can maintain her advantage in the second phase of the start, and it is the lead to the inside. She came into the series in the first, uh, first year, and she was really, like you say, hot property right up at the front end of the grid. And... So the first wishbones were made up 
and they were well over specified, so way too heavy. They needed trimming down and were subsequently trimmed down. If I show you the typical setup of an F1 car, what I'm going to show you now is the upright. This is the original K-Trim upright. You can see the clunkiness of it, the heaviness of it, but the robustness of it due to the heat and the excessive wear that an F1 car takes. And then as I move over further, I'll then move on to the hub. The hub of an F1 car obviously takes a lot of abuse with wheel changes at high speed, wheel guns hammering it through. And this is the hub of an F1 car, the original Caterham hub. Here you can actually see the original upright that I was using. It's a Formula Renault upright, and not as beefy as the Formula One upright. I'm pointing here at the steering arm. That tend to be really troublesome because I was using larger wheels than the original Formula Renault upright expected. And because they were wider wheels, it meant they were catching on the steering arm. Here you can actually see an example of where it will catch. So it meant the steering arm needed to be adjusted to give me a better turning circle. So I'll leave you with a few images here from the design stage where the actual turning circle was key and then the pickup points on the inside of the monocoque were key. I needed to replicate as near as I could but using much cheaper material. And this is what it looked like on the car. You can see the wishbones have been trimmed down. Everything fits into the original steering rack and onto the Formula Renault uprights. It's still saving me around £90,000 over this version, which was the original in Monaco in 2014. Then we look at the progress on the car. So people ask me all the time, where is it now? Well, this is the wiring being completed, the steering wheel set up, the absolute genius of Simon, who's managed to get the steering wheel working again. Some people don't like the Formula Renault engine sound, I do.
next time wheels more wheels and wheel nuts thanks for watching please like and subscribe a big shout out to simon who's done all the work on the steering wheel and keep an eye out for more updates and progress on the cto5 build <laughs>